Lots and lots of organizations want to take advantage of open source technologies and they love it because there's all this engineering done for them. But they need someone who can actually, they can lean on for support. That's where we come in with Diagrid. We provide enterprise grade dapper support. Hi, this is your host Sapna Bharti and we are here at KubeCon and CloudReadyCon in Paris and we have with us once again Mark Fussell, CEO of Diagrid. Mark, it's great to see you on the show. It's fantastic to be here at KubeCon. I'm enjoying this conference immensely and you know, have so much activity. KubeCon is always an exciting place to be. And we met at last KubeCon in Chicago. I just want to hear your opinion on the, the turnout, the audience, the questions that you get at the booth from US versus Europe? Well, actually, we've been having an amazing conference here, um, from a, certainly from a DAPA open source perspective. You know, for your audience, you know, DAPA is a CNCF technology. It's actually the 12th largest project inside CNCF. It has over 3,500 contributors part of the project. And you know, at this conference here you know, in Paris, we've had many, many sessions talking about DAPA and how it can help developers build their applications and help them be productive on top of Kubernetes. In fact, we had a whole app developer con day, uh, you know, and that's a co-located event where we talk about application development. Dapper features strongly in that from a security perspective and what's been happening there in terms of the whole developer ecosystem. Yeah, I remember last time, that's when you started the app developer conference. And so you're doing it here as well? Yes, yeah, we had that on Tuesday. Um, very well received. We had the room size was about 400 person room and it was full most of the time in most of the, uh, the sessions. So it was really well attended and we got some great feedback from it. It's great to hear that. Now, just for our audience, let's give them a quick overview of what is Dapper. Yeah, so Dapper um, it allows developers to be productive building applications. So it's a set of APIs that you know, incorporate common design patterns. So for example, if you're building a distributed app and you want to do an event-driven architecture and you want to do messaging, it has a PubSub API. Um, if you want to do service-to-service -service communication, it has service discovery and service communication. Um, very importantly, if you want to do like the Saga pattern, where you want to orchestrate a set of workflows or a set of microservices, it has a workflow engine built into it all. So developers combine these APIs together. It prevents them reinventing the wheel, or as we say, don't reinvent the pattern. Um, and we've shown that if you take Dapper and build on a platform like Kubernetes, you can get your business app built in 50% of the time. So take those APIs, uh, build your application. Uh, and then an important characteristic is that you can plug in backing infrastructure for it. So if you have a, for example, a service that saves state, you can plug in different state source behind it all. So it gives you this multi-cloud, multi-environment portability and flexibility in your design and the pro productivity of yet delivering on your application's code. Does that make sense? It does make sense, thank you. Did you folks make any announcement here at the event? We did, yes. Um, so for us at Diagrid, you know, we produce a, a tool called Diagrid Conductor. And the version of this that we released a year ago was focused very much on the operations teams who take Dapper and run Dapper in production scenarios. Um, what was amazing about that, and we've seen growth with lots of companies, whether they're financial, manufacturing, is that it allows them to have the confidence to operate and deploy new versions of Dapper, gather metrics. So our announcement here at KubeCon is we took that and we gave a, a free version of Conductor away. Um, this now that you can just come to our Diagrid site, sign up for Conductor free. Um, but this free version is focused on developers because we were recognizing that there were lots of developers who wanted an amazing tool for them to visualize their application, do diagnostics and debugging, understand the Dapper application and how it was running. So the free version of Conductor is available now. You can go to our site, sign up for it all, and you know, give it a try. What kind of use cases you are seeing there? Yeah, that's a good question. So I mean, we work across the spectrum of different organizations. We spend a lot of time working with, say, a lot of financial companies. Um, some of the use cases there go from building maybe a business workflow application where you're coordinating a set of services, um, we also see a lot of teams who are starting to put Dapper into platform engineering. So there's a couple of big financial companies we work with and they want to surface a consistent API across two different types of infrastructure. So Dapper serves as the API for the platform engineering team. Or you might drive, uh, get uh, sort of these event-driven applications, one where um, I have an application, I send a series of events to other services. So maybe I've built a retail application and I'm telling this other one to process the order now. So 
event-driven scenarios around this. So these are sort of applications we see built, you know, whether it's in manufacturing or in actually in gaming. We've even have gaming scenarios where people build big gaming applications where they send messages between the gaming players and things like this. So kind of a wide variety of messaging, communication, uh, workflow, um, and you know, generally building distributed applications around this for you know, mission critical applications. So if you look at these user based customers, what was the driver behind releasing Conductor? Oh, right, using Conductor, yeah. So for us, so what happens is Conductor itself um, allows the operations teams to understand exactly what is happening. So it kind of crosses the bridge from the developer team have taken on Dapper and said, we love it. And then the operations team goes, oh, I know, but now we have to manage the thing and you've told us we have to put this on Kubernetes. How do we upgrade Dapper on Kubernetes? How do we understand what's happening deep with inside the application? So it provides this bridge. Um, so imagine this, uh, you're a developer team, you've built a distributed application, it's running say 50, 100 different services, and you're having to explain to the ops team now what's happening in it. That's what Conductor does. It gives you great visualizations, it gives you the latency call from end to end in your application, and it allows the operations teams to be confident that they can talk to the engineering team or the development team to say, yeah, this service is going slow or this one's experiencing some errors or I need to upgrade the version of Dapper and builds that bridge between the two because you know, Dapper is a developer technology, but the ops people have to sort of manage this thing. I also want to talk about, you know, uh, Open source, we have talked about that also. Open source has its own role. It solves day one problem, but you know, customers need support. They need additional functionalities, yes. features. Not every company has all the developer resources to be able to leverage these open source. That's when commercialization play a big role. Yes. So when we look at conductor, I mean, and you're also kind of you know balancing it, you know, free version, paid version. So I want to understand these two versions. What is the difference? Who is it targeted at? Good question. So. First, I should kind of clarify, you know, yes, you're right, lots and lots of organizations want to take advantage of open source technologies, and they love it because there's all this engineering done for them, but they need someone who can actually, they can lean on for support. That's where we come in with Diagrid. We provide enterprise grade dapper support. So if you want architectural guidance or training, or even a hot fix for a security issue that has to be rolled out within a couple of hours because of some you know, issue with inside your service, come to us for that. So we provide enterprise support for Dapper. Then on top of that, we have the paid version of Conductor as a tool to help manage that, which provides longer, you know, deeper visual, um, gives you deeper metrics into what's happening inside your application. It allows you to, it has a lot of advisor rules built into it all. So for example, it gives you best practice advice. It analyzes your code. It analyzes your application and tells you security things or reliability issues that should be happening. So that's the, the paid version of the uh, Conductor Enterprise. The free version is more targeted to developers. You can only put it on one cluster. It doesn't have so many advisor roles. It's mostly you for you working on your local machine and basically it allows you to get going, but isn't designed for an operations team. So when you put this together, you, know, you can come to Diagrid for the open source support for Dapper and Conductor Enterprise for the operations team but we also think about the developer who just wants to get started on Dapper on their journey and, and, and put that whole flow together. So that's why the free version comes together. So we think we provide a complete package from development to operations as well as support. Of course, there are a lot of things in your pipeline which you cannot share, yeah. but uh, can you just give, give us a glimpse, you know, what next to expect from Diagrid? And we can also talk about if you have a roadmap for Conductor also. So for Conductor, we have a roadmap both on the free version of it, where we want to bring more and more developer functionality, especially visualizations of how your application is running, um, making sure you're being able to stream logs and things like this. On the enterprise side, we do a lot more things there in terms of more advisor rules, editing of all the manifests you have inside Dapper, and basically making sure that you bring more security and reliability features for that. Um, Inside Diagrid as a whole, we also have this other thing on our roadmap where we're taking Dapper API and hosting that as a service. So, and we call this another product, we call Catalyst, which allows you to use Dapper in non-Kubernetes scenarios. For that, you know, we're trying to reach out to this larger developer audience around these things. So that's kind of on our roadmap. But between the Dapper open source, you know, Diagrid Conductor for managing Dapper on Kubernetes and the enterprise support inside that, and our future product, 
uh, coming out later this year, GA, which is Catalyst, you know, we feel as we cover all the bases for developers to build these mission critical distributed applications. Where is developer in this Kubernetes ecosystem? Because when we look at Kubernetes, it was more or less to do with operators. If you're, yes. So, so and as you last year, you started that app, you know, app developer day yes. as well. So, so talk about the role there and what is changing here. Well, you know, imagine it. You know, you you're, you're a, a, you know the executive of a company and you're trying to build you know mission critical application and you say you know developers you know build my order processing system, my transaction uh, uh, my uh, transaction processing system, whatever it is. You know, they're expecting the developers to deliver, and then people say you know. Well, you should be running on Kubernetes. Well, Kubernetes is an ops thing, yes? It doesn't help in any way. So developers have to struggle to figure out how they stitch together you know, some open source tools, some other technologies they might be using from some language ecosystem. You know, we see a lot of Java developers or you might be a Go developer bringing in particular frameworks around all these things. So that's what we see is the struggle of developers. How do you bring all of that design experience, you know, legacy code, uh, we see a huge amount of people just taking legacy code and how is it that they even make that run on Kubernetes? What do they do? Simple things just like managing a secret to talk to a database, writing all this code. So, you know, that's where we see the developer struggles happening. What's happening in a developer ecosystem, you know, is that they are wanting to provide abstractions to help it easier for these consolidating uh, runtimes and environments. So, yeah, you know, we're here to help developers. Um, and I think that ultimately, a lot of this conference has to focus much more on the developers as much as it does on the, um, on the infrastructure people. I, I think now that you'll hear even more AI in this sort of stuff, that AI blending into the developer world is still a developer thing. So yes, you need to build those models, but you still have to use those models in some way. So I see this world where, you know, with App Developer Con, part of the co-located event, hopefully that becomes a main track um, and we see more of a sort of a developer focus happening inside the ecosystem inside CNCF. And since you mentioned AI, and AI was a big decision yesterday as well. Uh, I mean, AI has been around for a while. Gen AI is the new buzzword. Uh, what does it? What does Gen AI mean for Dapper or Diagrid? So immediately, right now, we're not doing anything directly with AI. Uh, I think developers are going to do a lot more of this because. I see this world where they blend together procedural code and models that they built that are specifically tied to the data that they've used. So in the end, data is king. You know, there's lots and lots of models out there and there'll be the general, the Gen IA ones, which is the general ones. But then in the end, an organization will have to look into its data and say, how is it that I'm using my trading data or my manufacturing data and I'm going to build a model that helps me optimize that. But I put that into my actual procedural code and blend those together. So. We'd like to think that one of the things that probably will come to Dapper eventually one day was how do we provide an API to help you la run, launch, manage the life cycle of a, a model that you've developed yourself, you know, the, the whole inferencing side of those things. But there's a lot of competing technologies in that space at the moment. So we're watching it closely, but still the vast majority of organi you know, teams and organizations are still just building traditional code right now. And you know, we gotta let some of the hype come out of the AI. <laughs> Mark, once again, thank you so much for taking time out today, talk about Dapper, Diagrid, the whole evolution of the ecosystem. Thanks for great insights. Uh, and I would love to chat with you again. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you for having me here today.